go to the principal's office right now. I was seven years old. I was in the first grade in Miss Ragazzino's class, and I just got into the biggest trouble I had ever gotten into in my entire life. Let me tell you the story. Well, it was a cold winter day in Minnesota, and so I got onto the bus and went on to school, and me and my friends, Brett and Marty, couldn't help but talk about the Minnesota Vikings the night before. Now, if there's one thing you know about me, you know how much I love football, and I love the Minnesota Vikings, and so me, Marty, and Brett were just talking about how amazing the game was, how Dante Culpepper threw a touchdown to Randy Moss, and how they would score, and how much we enjoyed it. Well... When we finally got to Northport Elementary, where I went to school and went into Miss Ragazzino's classroom, we quickly noticed that Miss Ragazzino wasn't there. Miss Ragazzino wasn't in her class. So me, Marty, and Brett looked at each other and we said, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they said the same thing. And Marty took the football out of his backpack and he said, what if we play in the classroom? Now, we knew that we weren't supposed to play in the classroom and we've never really done it before, but... I mean, there was no teacher there, and so, you know, we thought to ourselves, well, you know, a little bit of football in the classroom didn't really hurt anybody in the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, come on! So my friend Marty goes back, and I go on top of my chair, and I put up my arms, and I say, come on, throw me the ball. Marty throws me the ball, and... Uh, I caught it, and I was like, yes, and we're like, oh my goodness, it's just like on the TV. Now it's my turn, I've got the ball. So I take the ball, I say, hut, hut, I go back, I start looking, who am I going to pass to, who am I going to pass to, someone's coming in front of me, I duck around them, I look for someone else, he's not open yet, he starts to get open, someone else comes, I do a spin move, and then I finally throw the ball, and when I throw it, Miss Ragazzino enters into the classroom, and when she comes into the classroom, everybody looks at her, and my friend Brett, who I'd thrown the ball to, well, he stopped paying attention. It turned out that ball, it landed on the lamp of Miss Ragazzino. Miss Ragazzino's lamp. It was a glass lamp. And instead of Brett catching the ball, he stopped looking at the ball because he looked at Miss Ragazzino. That ball went forward. It hit her lamp. The lamp fell on the ground and... <laughs> It broke into a million pieces. Miss Ragazzino looked at me straight in the eyes and she said, Amin, go to the principal's office right now. You guys, I was really scared. I had never been in trouble before and I was always a really good boy. And what's worse is that I really wanted to go to a good college, and, and, and I know that if you're in the first grade and you get in trouble, like a green slip, sometimes, I don't know, I, I worried that what if, what if now I won't be able to go to a good college, and if I don't get a good college, then, you know, man, what am I going to do with my job when I grow up, and if I don't have a job, then, you know, how am I going to get married and then have a baby? These were the thoughts that were going through my mind as a first grader at Northport Elementary as I was walking to the principal's office I knocked on the door the principal told me to come in he said come in I said okay I opened the door sit down I sat down in that moment I felt like I had no hope I felt like all hope was gone that this was going to be the end, that the principal would look at me and he'd say, you are done forever, that he would look at me and he would 
take me out of class, out of school. He would call my parents. He'd give me a green slip and my life would be over. But I didn't lose hope. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalam ala Sayyidil Mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wassalama tasliman kathira. I sat in that chair with the principal standing in front of me or looking in front of me and I opened up my hands and I made a quick prayer in my heart. I said, Ya Allah, please help me. Ya Allah, please help me. The principal looked at me and he said, Son, what were you doing in Miss Ragazzino's classroom? I said, Um, well, sir, I made a terrible mistake. I did something that I never should have done. I'm really sorry about it. It's just I, I just it's just that I watched the Vikings and hold on, son. You're a Minnesota Vikings fan? I said, um, yeah, well yes, because um like there's Dante Culpepper and then there's like Randy Moss and 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 and, 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 and Robert S Smith. Oh son, you don't have to tell me all about it. I love the Minnesota Vikings. I was at the game last night. Did you watch it? Oh um um yeah yes yes sir I, I did in fact actually watch it. I, I watched it on TV and, 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 and me and my friends Marty and, and Brett we were playing and and and, and, and that's why oh oh you don't need to say anything further i, I, I understand S sometimes when we watch the vikings we get so excited that we do things that we never should have done is that is that what you're telling me uh what's your i mean um, yes sir that's that's actually ex exactly what happened hmm well how about i give you a warning and 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 let's just make sure this never happens again you guys i couldn't believe it i thought i was a goner for sure i thought that i had no hope i thought that he was gonna find a little prison put me inside of that prison and i would be behind bars forever i thought this was it you guys but somehow some way there was still hope and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the topic of today's discussion. It's called Rija'a, or hope. And so today, um, we're going to be talking about that. But before we do, allow me to introduce myself, and I'd love for you to introduce yourselves as well. My name is Amin, and I am the author of Noor Kids. What is Noor Kids, you ask? Well, great question. Noor Kids is a series in which every month families receive a brand new book delivered directly to their home. Books like Agents of Change and Faithful Friends and Right vs. Wrong and Nor Kids Go to Hajj and The Power of Prayer and Squeaky Clean and Never Give Up and Muslim Mastermind. And I could go on forever because, mashallah, we have created over 40 books. And every single month, members get a brand new book delivered directly to their home. Not only that, you get a global Muslim citizen passport. We're able to learn about the characters, put in your own information. And then every month when the new book comes in the mail, you're able to collect them as badges in your passport. And finally, um, you get this really great box where you're able to collect them. Now, here's the thing. If you are a member of Nora Kids, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much for your support. And I hope that you love it. Thank you so much. If you are not a member, please do consider joining for two reasons. Number one, you will love it and your family will love it. And it will like change your mind forever. And inshallah, you'll really enjoy it. But also, you'll support us. We literally exist because of support from people like you. And so if this is something that you benefit from and enjoy, my sincere hope is that you try it. And for just $1, we're only doing this for a couple more weeks. For $1, you can try Noor Kids uh, and you'll get your first book, your first box, your first passport, and inshallah, you will love it. That's it. N-O-O-R-K-I-D-S dot com, NoorKids.com. All right, enough about me. 
um, what about you? Say salams, where you're from, your name, um, and inshallah, we'll be able to say salams a little bit later. Now, today, I want to read from our very latest book. This book is called In God We Trust. Oh my goodness, look at this book. It's moving around. Why is it moving around? Oh my gosh, it's covered my face. You guys, I am literally a book man. What happened to my face? Oh no. All right, here it is. Sorry. Okay, that was very dramatic. Today's been a very dramatic day. All right, so we're going to be reading on this. This is actually the very latest book that we've sent out. So if you have not gotten it in the mail yet, you will be getting it very soon. And inshallah, you will, of course, love it. Now, like every single one of our books, uh, Nor Kid starts with a... Oh, the lights went off. Let me go get the lights. One second. So before I actually read one of the stories, I want to introduce you to the four characters within Nora Kids. And instead of sharing you the characters page, I want to show it to you on the cover because each of the characters are actually on the cover. So, all right, over here, this is Amin. All right, you guys can all see Amin right here. Amin is a sports star. He loves baseball and soccer and football football. He has an older brother in college named Hasid. And the one thing about Amin is lots of times he does stuff without thinking about it and because that he gets into trouble. Then over here, this is Amira. Amira is an artist. She loves exploring all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings through art and poetry and painting. This one over here, this is Shireen. Shireen is also seven years old. She has a twin brother named Jafar. Um, lots of times you'll see her with her camera because she wants to be just like her mom who works for National Geographic. And then this guy over here, this is Asad. Asad is a scientist. He loves to break things apart just to figure out how to put them back together again. And these four ladies and gentlemen are the Noor kids. All right, now... I'm going to be reading out of one of our, like literally our latest book. Um, uh, but, um, you know, every book, it starts with a parent's page. There's two different stories in it. I'm only going to be reading one story. But before I read the story, I need you all to join me in saying Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. <clears throat> ah, I didn't hear you. You have to say it louder. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Okay, I think that there was a mom or a dad in that room who I couldn't hear, so I'll need them to say one more time. Because look, I'm not going to start until you say Bismillah. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All right, let's do this. Hold on to hope. <clears throat> Amin and Asad planned their first solo hike on Mount Maple. Amin says, are you ready for this? Asad says, yes. And they high five. They squish into the back seat of Asad's car. Move over, says Amin. I am over. There's no more space, says Asad. In the car, Asad's dad drills the boys. Do you have your map? asks Asad dad. Asad's dad. Check. Flashlight? Check. Food? Amin lifts the flap on his backpack to reveal a stash of food. Double check. <laughs> By the way, my name is Amin. This is also Amin. Everyone asks, they're like, hey, Amin, are you and Amin like the same guy? We're not the same guy, but there's one thing that we both have in common. We both love, love, love food. Okay. Asad's dad pulls up to the trailhead at the base of the mountain. Maybe I should come with you guys, says Asad's dad. Come on, dad, we can handle this. By the way, Asad's dad's car is pretty sweet, isn't it? It's a pretty cool car, I think. <laughs> Okay, but I'll pick you up at 6 p.m. sharp. My watch is set. Got it, says Asad. The boys start hiking. We just need to follow the yellow circle trail. Easy as pie, says Amin. Let me guess, you brought pie for dessert, asks Asad. You know me too well, says Amin. The boys spot an eagle gliding in the sky. Wow, look at it fly. Allahu Akbar, wish I could do that. 
they discover a colony of ants in a fallen tree. They're so busy, says Asad. Do you guys see that? Wow, that's amazing. Just watching them makes me tired, says Asad, and hungry. Let's take a break and eat, says Amin. Amin points to a cliff a short distance off the path. Let's go eat there. We'll be able to see the entire mountain, says Amin. Do you see that? He points. Okay, so long as we don't lose the yellow circle trail. We have a map. No one gets lost with a map, says Amin. I wonder if you guys can guess what's going to happen. The boys finally get to the cliff. Phew, we made it, says Amin. It was further than it looked, right, says Asad. Definitely, says Amin. The boys take out their food and eat under the late afternoon sun. You are right, Amin. Look at all the beautiful leaves. Asad's watch buzzes. Oh, it's, it's time to head back, Amin. Remember because his dad said 6 p.m. is when he had to be home? Or when he, they had to be back? The boys get down from the rock. Amin, it's this way, says Asad. No, Asad, it's this way, says Amin. Hold on, let's look at the map, says Asad. Asad pulls the map out of Amin's backpack. So, um, where are we, says, As says Amin. Can you guys tell where they are? It's like some things here there's some there's a well here there's a bridge here there's an eagle here there's a beaver dam you guys i, I have no idea where they are Psh, i have no clue says amin do you know how to read it it's your map amin says asad i don't know how to read your map says asad okay no problem says amin let's go this way if it's right we'll if it isn't right, we'll backtrack and try another direction. So what Amin's saying is like, okay, let's just go one way. If it's not right, then we'll go backwards and then we'll do the other direction. The boys walk and walk and walk. We're super lost. What if we never find the trail, says Amin. Darkness creeps into the sky as evening falls. It's already 6.20 p.m. Let's get out the flashlight, says Asad. And by the way, can you guys see it's getting a little bit darker too, right? Amin turns on the flashlight, but it doesn't work. Oh, no. We forgot to check the batteries, says Amin. Suddenly, the boys hear something. Sounds like a pack of wolves, says Asad. Glowing eyes peer out from the bush from the brush around them Asad we we're in trouble says Amin do you guys see those eyes oh my gosh you guys I'm really scared I don't know if I can read on anymore guys I don't know what's gonna happen okay I'll read it I'll read it I'll read it. I'll stop being so dramatic okay the wolves draw in closer come here behind this tree says Asad there's no hope Asad says Amin Amin and Asad squat with their backs pressed against the tree trunk it's it's been nice knowing you brother says Amin have uh, says Amin have faith Amin says Asad can you guys see that these are wolves oh my goodness they're getting so close Close. Asad raises his hands. So in this moment, Asad raises his hands. He says, no, my Lord, help us. The boys close their eyes and they hear a thunderous sound. <laughs> because I don't want to even see what happened. I don't know what happened. 
The boys opened their eyes in amazement. It was Asad's dad. Allahu Akbar, your prayer was answered, said Amin. The boys hug Asad's dad. Asad's dad says, never lose hope, boys. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us, call on me and I will answer you. Amin says, how did you know we needed help? Asad's dad said, well, when you didn't come at 6 p.m., I I knew something was wrong, so I started looking for you, says Asad's dad. When the group gets to the car, Amin begins to think about the journey. So you knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help us? Asked Amin. Asad says, of course, easy as pie. Speaking of pie, there isn't any left, is there? Asked Asad. Have hope, man, says Amin. Let's split the last piece. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, give me a round of applause. Woo! I love that story. That story was amazing. Amazing. And by the way, there's a second story that, inshallah, you guys will be able to read when you get it. I can't wait for you to do it. Uh, but before... We move forward. We have to discuss the story a little bit because there's a lot of interesting things that happen. Okay, so, um, so 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 here's the thing. All right, in the story, what happened? In the story, Amin and Asad, they go on this hiking trip, and they get lost. They get surrounded by wolves, and Amin loses hope. He loses hope. He said, this is it. We're goners. Asad doesn't lose hope. What does he do? What does Asad do in the story that was so important? Asad raised his hands and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. He never lost hope. No matter the situation, Asad raised his hands and he says, Ya Allah, help me. Right? That's what he did. And when he did, what happened? Allah answered his prayer through his dad. His dad came like a raging lion. He came, he went, scared away all the wolves, saved the boys, went back into the car, easy as pie. In fact, they even split a pie. Okay? Amazing. So, we are going to... Um, so there's a couple of questions. One of the questions is, have you ever felt like there was no hope? What helped you get through it? Did it happen right away or did you have to have patience? Okay, so lots of times when there's situations that happen to us and we have hope, sometimes we don't get the answer right away. Sometimes we have to wait a little bit and we have to be patient. But Allah promises, He says, call on me and I will answer you. So what that means is when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, He will always answer us. But sometimes it takes a little bit longer um, than we might want. Sometimes we want it right away, but sometimes we have to be patient. Should we only remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we're in a tough situation or even when everything is fine? So, for example, in this situation, Asad remembers Allah in this very tough situation, right? They're surrounded by wolves. And of course, in that situation, we should remember Allah. But is that the only time we should remember Him? No, we should remember Him all the time. Now, this story makes me think of another story that happened to me a couple of years ago, okay? So, when I was 24 years old, so this was approximately six years ago, we got a phone call from the doctor, and the doctor said that my mom was really sick. They said that my mom was really, really, really sick. And the doctor told us, look, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I don't think there's anything we can do. Now, I started to get really sad. And I got worried. I got angry and upset. I kind of felt like Asad and Amin surrounded by wolves. I started to think to myself, oh man, there's no hope. Oh man, there's nothing we can do. Oh man, what, 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 you know, what can we do? But then, while I was reading the Quran, I came across a story about Prophet Musa and the Bani Israel. 
Now, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he was sent to the people of the Bani Israel. They lived in Egypt. And the Bani Israel were being treated terribly by the Pharaoh or the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh used to whip them. He would beat them. He would give them such a hard time. And from morning until evening, all of the Bani Israel would be his slaves. Now, when the Bani Israel would go to uh, the Pharaoh and say, Hey, Pharaoh, come on, man, chill out. Pharaoh would say, Hey, I am God on earth. Pharaoh said that he himself was God. I mean, come on, no man can be God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much bigger than a man. He can't be the Pharaoh. So Prophet Musa alayhi salam came. And one day he goes to the people, the Bani Israel, and he says, Look, I am a messenger from God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent me and he has sent me to free you. I am going to free you from the Pharaoh. Just trust me, believe in me, follow me. And if you do it, we can kiss these days goodbye because we are going to leave the Pharaoh. I'm going to take you to salvation. We're going to be completely free, free at last, free at last. God Almighty, free at last. So the Bani, Bani Israel say, okay, great, let's do it. And one day, Prophet Musa salam, says, okay, today's the day. We're leaving. I want everyone to pack their bags and we're going to leave Egypt. Now, you guys, this wasn't just five people or ten people. These were like thousands of people. And it wasn't just adults and like old men. No, these were moms. These were dads. These were grandpas. These were grandmas. These were little boys, little girls. Everybody just grabbed a little bag. They left their homes and they followed Prophet Musa as they left Egypt because they said, okay, today's the day. We're leaving Egypt. We're leaving the Pharaoh behind. Prophet Musa is going to save us. So Prophet Musa started going on this journey. And they walked through the desert and they walked through the mountains and they walked through different trails and they walked 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 and they walked. And the people who were following Prophet Musa were initially, they were super excited. They're like, yes, we're going to be free. Yes, we're going to leave the Pharaoh. Yes, we're going to be in safety. But as they walked further and further and further and further, they were like, hey, come on, Prophet Musa. Take it easy, man. We're getting tired. And P.S., do you even know where we're going? Prophet Musa some says, come on. Yeah, of course. You guys, I'm a prophet. So they followed him. But a time came. When, while they were walking, they couldn't walk anymore because they reached a sea, like they reached a sea of water. And when they reached that sea of water, they couldn't walk anymore because there was like water in front of them. And so the Bani Israel go to Prophet Musa and they're like, hey, I mean, you're a prophet, right? I mean, if you're sent from God, I mean, it feels like we're lost because look, there's a bunch of water in front of us. We can't even go any further. Now, while the people were asking these questions to Prophet Musa, they hear something from behind them. They hear something from behind them and behind them, they hear like the... And they're like, what is that? And they look behind them. When they look behind them, they see a cloud of dust. They're like, what could be in this cloud of dust that's making this noise? What could be in this cloud of dust that's making this noise? And finally, the cloud of dust, it goes down. And when it goes down, they see that there are an army of horses, an army of horses that's coming behind them. And they've taken out their swords. And then they've taken out their bows and arrows. It's the Pharaoh's army. They are now right before them is, a, is this water, this body of water and behind them is the entire Pharaoh's army they've taken out their swords they've taken out their bows and arrows the people the bunny israel are now thinking to themselves oh my goodness there's water in front of us Pharaoh behind us this is it we're gonna die there is no hope oh my goodness this is it there's no hope they go to prophet musa they they say what have you done what have you done why have you done this to us we're gonna die there's no hope in that moment when nobody else believed, Prophet Musa alayhi salam believed. 
In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Prophet Musa salam, he raises his hands. He says, Kalla ya Rabbi. He says, No, my Lord, in that moment, stuck between the sea and the Fir'aun's army, when all the people around him was shouting and yelling and losing hope, one man, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, believed. And when he asked Allah for help, he hears a voice voice from the sky that says, oh Musa, take your staff, it's like a big stick, and strike it against the ground. And when he does, the Quran describes it like two mountains emerge from the sea. So that water, it's like two mountains come from that water. And Prophet Musa salam, and the Bani Israel they're saved. They're able to go through this uh, this passageway and they're saved from the Pharaoh's army. That story was so important for me to hear you guys. Because it made me remember and it made me believe that I can hope as well. That even when the doctor says this or the doctor says that, I could pray. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Ya Allah, just like Musa alayhi salam prayed when everyone else lost hope. Ya Allah, I am praying to you when everyone is losing hope. Ya Allah, please help me. And you know what happened? Allah did help me. Allah did help me. My mom had all sorts of dreams. She had a dream to see me get married. My mom saw me get married. My mom had a dream to go for Umrah. She had an opportunity to go for Umrah. So many things were answered, but it was because we believed, because we hoped in Allah. We put our trust in Him, and we never lost hope. And so, this was a story that I have the challenge for this week, ladies and gentlemen, is what I'm calling the family miracle challenge, okay? And here's what I want you to do. I want you to talk to your mom and dad. And I want you to ask them at the dinner table, hey, mom and dad, was there ever a time when you lost hope or when everyone else lost hope, but you believed? And you prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you. When you prayed to Allah and you said, Ya Allah, I need your help. Please help me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped you. Okay? Because I am 100% sure that your mom and your dad have a story of a time when Allah answered their prayer. And what I want you to do is, number one, I want you to ask your parents. I want you to ask your mom and dad and say, Hey, mom and dad. Tell me the story. Tell me a story about a time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered your prayer. When he gave you an answer to your prayer. And once you hear that story, I want you to share it with us. You'll just go to norkids.com slash hope and you'll be able to upload a video. And in that video, I want you to tell that story. Tell the story of what happened. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Answer your family's prayer. Now, you guys know how I tell stories, okay? You guys listen to me. You guys see how I tell stories. This is your chance to tell a story from your family. And um, I'm going to be picking maybe five of them um, to broadcast. But I want you to make sure that you do a good job. Try to make it two minutes or less. Try to make it really exciting and interactive, just like how I do it, and I want you to put it up, okay? So again, this is the Family Miracle Challenge. I want you to talk to your mom and dad, ask them, hey, have there ever been a time when your du'as were answered? And your parents will have to think about it, and once they think about it, they'll tell you. They'll tell you a story, and what I want you to do is I want you to retell that story and upload it online for the world to see, okay? All right, sounds good. But um, so this Family Miracle Challenge, I'm giving you guys two weeks to do it, two weeks. So try to do it right away. But um, in the next two weeks, I will be uh, sharing all of the results. Now, last uh, two weeks ago, we did another challenge, and that was the, um, it was the Sponge Artwork Challenge, if you remember, right? The Sponge Artwork Challenge. 
And alhamdulillah, we had a bunch of entries, a bunch of entries. And so I picked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of them that I thought were amazing that I'm going to share with you. Now, um, alhamdulillah, there were a lot of people who submitted them. And I promise you that I'm going to create a YouTube video where we're going to talk about where I'm going to show all of them and everyone's going to be able to see it. So uh, follow us on YouTube. Hey, let me actually just put this here. Right. So um, on social media. So YouTube, if you search for Nora Kids, you can subscribe. When you subscribe, you'll be able to see those videos. Also, we're on Facebook and Instagram, so you can follow us if you have those. Um, but um, anyways, follow us on YouTube. That video Honestly, it's going to take probably a week or so just because I have a little bit of travel coming up. Um, so because of that, I'm not going to be able to put it up right away. But I will put up all of the videos, inshallah. Subscribe to the YouTube and you'll see it. And not just the videos, even the pictures as well. All right. So let's go through these. Bismillah ar rahim Wait. alaikum. My name is Farhana. I'm 10 years old. I did the sponge art challenge. I chose the word peace because Islam means peace and we need peace in this world. Awesome. So true. We need peace in this world. And for Hana, that looks really good. I love the colors. Blue, yellow, green, orange. Amazing. And P.S., one of the other things that I like is that, you know, as I think about all of the kids who are watching this, I mean, there's kids that are young, there's kids that are old, there's kids that are medium height, there's kids that are tall height, there are kids that are, you know, of all different types. And so I really appreciate Farhana. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you're here today. Um, and thank you for participating in this challenge. All right, this, ladies and gentlemen, is Zubair. Zubair, look at this. Look at this painting that Zubair has made. Wow. He took the challenge to the next level. Now, do you guys know what he wrote? This is a meme, Aleph. This is a sheen. So, Allah. Masha'Allah. And that's exactly what I see want to say when I see this. Masha'Allah, Zubair, you did an amazing job. And by the way, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I can tell. Zubair has an amazing smile. Thank you for doing this, Zubair. Good job. Masha'Allah. Um, now, this is Tahir. This is Tahir. And look at what Tahir has done here. So he, when he did this, he actually cut, he cut the masking tape in such a way that he could add these rounded edges. And then instead of using one color, he used three colors, but it's called a gradient, okay? That gradient means it goes from dark to light to dark again. Now, does anyone know what this says? So this is an alif. This is a lam al this is a ha, this is a meme, this is a dal, so it's alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, oh my goodness, alhamdulillah, Tahir, amazing job, kudos to you, this is like something that you would see like in a museum, amazing, alhamdulillah, Tahir, thank you for sharing it with us. All right, now this one, so a couple of you guys had done newer kids ones, and I, of course, appreciate it when you guys do that, and hopefully you can, you know, put them up in your room or enjoy it. This one was fun because not only did the person do newer kids, but you'll see that there's a heart, there's a little flower, and they also changed the colors. So you'll notice here it's green, here it's blue, here it's yellow, and then inside of here it's red. So it's just really exciting. So in art, lots of times they talk about contrast, right? When two colors like yellow and blue are right next to each other, it really pops. And I felt like this one had really good contrast. Thank you so much for doing this. And this one was done by, oh man, let me find it. Ooh, if I can. So you guys, these are some of the submissions, mashallah. There are a lot of them, but I forgot to write the person's name.
This is by Fahimda Muhammad, who's 10 years old from Kentucky. All right. Fah Fahmida Muhammad from Kentucky. Thank you, Fahmida. All right, let's look at this. And this I love this one. Look at this. Oh, that's Hanya. She said, I'm Hanya, and I did this because I love Allah. And if you look at it, this actually says Allah. And Hanya is such a little girl, and mashallah, she did such a good job. And look at these different colors. Hanya, thank you so much. Amazing. <coughs> All right, so I really like this one too. You'll notice that like there's all, so um, there's something called complementary colors. So this one has like red and orange all together and it says hub, which means love. And so when you think about love, you think about like the color red and orange and just excitement. And uh, mashallah, even Omar's face looks so exciting that he's excited. But this is a really good job. And it's, it's simple, but even though it's simple, like it looks beautiful beautiful i hope um that your parents hung that up in their home and that they really enjoyed it alhamdulillah um let me actually get the lights one second all right you guys i want you to guess what this one is okay so she's peeling off She's peeling off the tape right now. And you can tell, like, she put a lot of tape on there because she was trying to make something really interesting. And by the way, this is Amara Bhati. Amara Bhati. So this is actually the New York Kids logo. So what she did, if you see this, she created this, the background in, I think that's like green or gray. And then what she did is she uh, did uh, Noor Kids, she did the um, tape, and she did the kids too. And so she did one part that's yellow, one part that's blue. And again, I mean, think about how amazing that is. Like that takes so much time to do. Anyways, Amara, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you hung that up. Okay, this is the last one. So how Allah helped me, he helped me make this M, he helped me paint the blue color, and paint the pink color, and the orange color, and the red color. And he helped me uh, do the masking tape, M, and the A. So has he, has he helped you with anything else? Besides. He helped me do the fingerprints too. Okay. Anything else he helped you with? Nope. I'm, I'm done. Good office. Good office. <laughs> okay, good office. Good office. All right, so this is Mariam Sheikh. Now, I really like this one. So there's a couple of things that I really like about it. One is you'll notice the colors. There's orange, there's blue, there's red. And then also, you know, you'll notice that she included some finger paint is there as well. And also, I liked how she talked about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped her with so much stuff. Anyways, so um, like I mentioned, <clears throat> I would love to showcase some of your work next. Uh, it's not going to be next week, but the week after that um, through the Family Miracle Challenge. And this is an opportunity for you to do storytelling, storytelling, um, because I love storytelling as well. Um, so uh, go to norikids.com slash hope. You can upload your video. And uh, inshallah, um, I can't wait to see what you've done. And, um, you know, we will, uh, of course, show those. So ladies and gentlemen, before we end, a couple of quick announcements. So announcement number one, uh, inshallah, if you have not re uh, gotten your book yet, in God we trust, you will be getting it, inshallah, very shortly. Number two is... Um, we are going to be meeting next week, same time, same place. 
we have a special program next week. We're going to be talking about bullying. Um, and so I'm really excited about that one. Tell your friends to join. Um, inshallah, they'll benefit from it as well. And finally, um, if you are someone who's watching who is not a member right now, um, or is not currently a member, my sincere request, do consider joining your kids. Um, not only will you love our books and benefit from them and your family will benefit from it, but honestly, we exist because of support from people like you. So my humble and sincere request, do give it a try. For $1 at norkids.com, you'll get your first box, your first book, your first passport, and inshallah, you will love it. So we will end and we will end with dua. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, Ya Allah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ya Allah. Thank you for my mom and my dad, Ya Allah. Thank you for my brother and my sister. Ya Allah, thank you for my eyes, my ears, and my nose. Ya Allah, thank you for my fingers. Ya Allah, thank you for my tummy. Ya Allah, thank you for my mouth. Ya Allah, thank you for my teeth. Ya Allah, thank you for my home. Thank you for my clothing. Ya Allah, thank you for my food. Ya Allah, if I try to count all of the blessings you have given me, I could never count them. So Ya Allah, thank you. Ya Allah, even though you've given me so much, I've made so many mistakes. Ya Allah, for the times that I have shouted and yelled, for the times that I was being mean and nasty. Ya Allah, for the times that I did something I never should have done. Ya Allah, I'm sorry. Ya Allah, I pray for all of those that are in need. Ya Allah, the people who are sick, please cure them. Ya Allah, the people who are homeless, Ya Allah, give them homes. Ya Allah, the people who don't have a mom or a dad, Ya Allah, make it easy for them. Ya Allah, for the people who don't have clothes, please clothe them. Ya Allah, I pray for peace on earth. Ya Allah, in America, in Canada, and around the world. Ya Allah, wherever there is war, Ya Allah, bring safety and peace. Ya Allah, I pray for my mom and my dad. Just like they took care of me when I was a baby, Ya Allah, take care of them when they get older. Ya Allah, I pray for my grandma and my grandpa. Ya Allah, I pray for myself. Ya Allah, give me the best of this world and the best of the hereafter, and save me from any challenges in the hereafter. Ya Allah, bless me with knowledge. Ya Allah, bless me with wisdom. Ya Allah, bless me with patience. Ya Allah, send your blessings, your best blessings, Ya Allah, on our holy prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be on him. Send your blessings on him, Ya Allah, send your blessings on his family, and send your blessings on his companions. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining me. And also, hey, P.S., if you can, please remember Noor Kids in your duas. I would very much appreciate it. And we have a lot of things that we're planning for the month of Ramadan that I cannot wait to tell you about. Probably in about two weeks is when we'll let you know about it. But please do keep us in your du'as and say, Ya Allah, please help Nura kids, put baraka in their efforts. Everyone say, Ameen. Ameen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, inshallah, we'll see you next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.